One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly, pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside and belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. You're sitting in my basement on the south side for 30 minutes of good in a world of dumb that is south side pod. Mike's here. Bill's here. I'm here. My name's Chris. How are you? If you're new to south side pod, hit the subscribe button. And remember that all the shows are on demand anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com. Recent episodes took us to Blue Island and the new Lyric Theater. We went through Lamont, an old favorite Nick's Tavern, and a new place, Matt's Barbecue. We tried them both, and then we just recently learned that the Oak Forest High School soccer team is running their program like a minor league baseball team. That was kind of cool. And if you hear the phrase, hey bear, don't worry, you don't need to know why we're saying it, but if you want to find out, there's an entire episode titled, Hey Bear. This show, we're going to Flossmore Station Brewing Company. We're going to try some beers and find out about some cool events going on out there. We're also going to find out how easy it is, or maybe a little difficult, to run for public office. Southside Pod is brought to you proudly by Tom Walsh, your Edward Jones financial advisor. He takes care of my money, takes care of bills. He's been a big help, especially over the last year. And he's located at the corner of 111th and Kedzie. Stop in and see Tom or give him a call at 773 773- 779-0023. I kick off the show with positivity because Mr. Negative down here at the other end of the bar walks in here every single week with something to complain about. Do you think that's a South Side trait being negative? No, you're, you're a, a negative person. No, I'm uh, negative. I mean, I'll, I will say pessimistic, which is a nicer word for negative. You see the worst in everything. But, but guess what that does? So if I think the worst is going to happen, I'm either going to get into that situation and go, Crawl up I knew that was going to happen. On the couch. I prepared for it, and I'm ready for it. Or something better than that happens where I go, wow, I'm pleasantly surprised. So in my situation, I can only get happy or normal. I can never be disappointed because I always think the worst is going to happen. So you're, you're a set the, set the bar low guy, and everyone can step over it. Right. I can only be expected of what happened and be like, huh. I knew that was going to happen and, and not be disappointed. Or, wow, what a great day. That, that was wonderful. The person <laughs> did slightly above the minimum effort. So essentially what you do is you wake up every day and you think to yourself, I'll probably be dead by the day. Yeah. It's the end of the day. The and then sure when you get to the end of the day, noon. you're like slapping high fives going, not look at me, yet. I survived. Right. I get up and I, I, I get the morning paper and I just go to the obituaries. <laughs> and if I don't see my name... It's going to be a good day. Do you think there's going to be a point where your name's in there? I don't think you know how the obituaries work. Look at the paper still. It's not a predictive model. It's not a a predictive model. It's not like your name shows up. You're like, oh, I guess today something bad's going to happen. It's not how they work. You never know. No. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer. Let's order another pitcher of beer. That pitcher of beer. It is a beautiful day outdoors next to a caboose that's really a bar and also a place that people will play music. And I'm talking about Flossmore Station Brewing Company. And I have Ryan Chaya here, the brewer. He's been on Southside Pod before. Uh, We're going to try a couple of beers, especially because uh, 
Ryan had a beer on the top five beers on the South Side that South Side Pop put out this summer, and that beer was seasonal, and he doesn't have it. So we have to replace that slot, and he's, he's I think he's vying to try to at least keep Flossmoor uh, on there. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Tell everybody where this brewery is. It's next to the Metro Stop, essentially. You got a big kitchen in there. You got a dining room. People come in. I see kids having lunch right now. You see families coming here in the daytime and, and in the evening. You got outdoor seating. You got all kinds of beers on tap. Basically, what you're looking for, even with the bar that's got the train going around above it, whatever kind of scene you're looking for, you got about four or five of them going here in this place. Yeah, uh, you said a lot, so to follow up with that, it's hard. <laughs> but uh, That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're right adjacent to the Flossmoor uh, Metro Stop. Uh, we're about a half mile south of 183rd, and we're about a half mile west of Western Avenue. So kind of right off all these main strips and yeah we got a ton of outdoor seating we got you know two banquet rooms a huge dining room a big bar so plenty of space for everybody to kind of hang out and have a couple beers and some food you got a big board of beer you got uh, one side of it i would say are your staples okay it seems like that that left side of the big board everything on there is generally on there there might be that barrel aged one that you got at the bottom that may not be there all the time but the other ones all on that side are like your staples and then the other side of the board is really getting long with all the ones that are either seasonals or you're trying something new i mean you're you've got a lot of selection here how are you keeping up uh, you know, we're just trying to rotate out as much uh, stuff as we can. We're coming to the end of summer, so uh, we have seven year-round beers right now, um, and we got, I think, seven uh, seasonal taps on, and we'll have about five more in about two weeks, so we're uh, just keeping them coming. Awesome, and you got different kinds for different tastes, so you got two here in front of me. Wh- which one do you want to try first? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll start with the, the lesser of the, the two alcohols, so we'll go with our... Uh, newly released uh wonderfully witty belgian whip beer i like belgian wits i'm gonna tell you first of all they're refreshing on a on a hot day i mean we're sitting here in august and it's beautiful out today is this a difficult one to make on the on the scale of different kinds of beers that you make uh relatively easy i mean it's just you, you, to me to make a good wit you know you just don't stray too far from what is proven to be a good example so i mean you know we do about 30 to 40 percent wheat we have some coriander, some orange peel, and we, uh, you know, round out with some Belgian wit yeast, and it all comes together to represent this classic style. You, this is like a seasonal beer, essentially. So is this is this what they're drinking in Deutschland right now? Are, are they in the fatherland having wit beers? Are they in Belgium having wit beers? Are they in that set that part of of Europe having uh, having these beers right now? And is it only a seasonal thing over there? That's a very good question. I would. <laughs> I love this. I feel like every interview I stump Ryan once. Like he goes, "Will you stop? Just talk about the beer, damn it! What's wrong with you?" I need a I need a list of questions beforehand <laughs> in order to come prepared for the next interview. But I would hope they're drinking this. You know, obviously Oktoberfest uh, season is right around the corner. So uh, at least in in Europe. So we're uh, we're coming up to that, and we'll have our own releasing in uh, about two weeks. So. That's what hopefully they're drinking or close to it now. This is a good one. I like it. It's a good representation of the style. Uh, it's solid. It's crisp. It, it reminds me almost in the, in the color like a hazy IPA, but a lighter one because it's got a little bit of fog in there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, uh, like an Allagash White kind of uh, like and hazy IPA looking beer. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's a nice, crisp, cool drink to enjoy on a hot summer's day like today. Any events, any big releases before we get to this other one that it's coming up here with uh, Flossmore? So we have our uh, annual Flossmore Fest. It's our town festival coming up on September 10th. Uh, it's a Saturday that's from uh, noon to about 9 o'clock. And then we're also, on that same day, is a uh, half marathon, the Hidden Gem Half Marathon. And that takes place at, I think, like 8 in the morning. And so that'll be like an all-day event. And we're releasing... Uh, Hidden Gem, uh, Grapefruit Kolsch that day. We'll have our Oktoberfest on. It's a it's a fest beer, so it's not your traditional like Marzen. It's uh, more of like a Pilsner kind of a drink. And uh, we'll have about two or three other uh, fruit beers coming out that day as well. Oh, you're talking about half marathon. Are the marathon runners, are they generally after the marathon downing beers? I don't, I'm not a runner, Ryan. I don't know if you could tell by looking at me. 
I'm not the guy who gets in the marathons, half marathons, quarter marathons. I don't even run down the block anymore, okay? It's just not something I do, all right? I, I go for the uh, lower impact uh, exercise, which is uh, the 12 ounce curls over here. So do these people, after they're done running and doing this thing to their body, then sit there and say, now I'm gonna drink some beer? Like, what's it like after these marathons with the beer intake? I'm also not a runner as well, so I'll skip right to the drinking part, but your first people that cross the finish line, you know, they might not be the ones that go and consume a beer, but we there were several hundred people drinking last year, and I think we went through about four kegs, uh, about 60 gallons just for runners alone, so that was, uh, it was a it was a good turnout, and they do drink beer after a race, that's for sure. Right. You're supposed to carb up before the race, right? Aren't, I mean, isn't that when you should be drinking the beer? I wonder if anybody's ever tried it, like, I'm just going to down a bunch of beer and then go run it. Like I said, I don't run, so I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do before a race. So, yes. You and I can only imagine what, what the, right, the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it is. And most likely, we would both pick the wrong way. All right. Let's 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 talk about this guy uh, I saw up on the board. This is a 10.5% of the way that you have this listed. Tell me what this beer is because it looks like an ale. So this is a collaboration brew that we did with Old School Brewing, Route 66 Brewing in Wilmington. It's a triple IPA, triple West Coast IPA with... Uh, we got some classics like Cascade and Centennial, and we threw some uh, Simcoe and uh, Mosaic hops in there as well. So it's got that nice caramel bitterness uh, to it, and then it rounds out with some um, nice citrus notes that you get from that Simcoe and Mosaic. Uh, this is Ticket to Kick It. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something right now. This one's up my alley. Yeah, I think we've talked about this before. I know I talk about it on the show. Whenever we're talking beer, I love West Coast IPAs. Okay, I know when I say that and I'm on the south side, somebody's like, well, you don't like uh, stuff from around here? I like plenty of stuff that's from around here. I like East Coast stuff. I like stuff that's from the that's originated here in the Chicagoland area. But when I got into craft beer, I was doing radio on the West Coast in Reno, Nevada. So I go into Northern California and that whole scene around Tahoe and they had all these people brewing up there. And then I was in Southern California and the beer scene was blowing up about 20 years ago out there and it was really becoming a thing. And these IPAs, they were the thing and they would actually they would warn you they'd be like well you can't handle this one this one's got way too many hops in it like they would tell people like you know most of you can't handle this beer that's how they would market stuff this would be kind of like that like this like an arrogant bastard like really gets at you right and that was one from back then stone brewing was doing stuff like that so this reminds me of that and and i like it man yeah it's you know we were we were talking about it back in april and we were like you know let's 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 go back to the roots of craft beer and you know the the out of this world kind of stuff. And this is this is a representation of that that triple IPA, overly hot, it's overly bitter. You know, it's it's and it rounds out really nice. So keeping it up with Stone Brewing and that Ruination and stuff like that, all those heavy hitter IPAs back in the day, I think it's a good representation of it. Why is it a triple IPA? Is it just the amount of alcohol? Is it the amount of hops? Is it the type of hops? What is it? So yeah, it's basically uh, just the alcohol percentage. So you got your like IPAs up to about six and then your doubles are from like seven to nine-ish. And then your triples are anything kind of above that. So this is one lands at 10 and percent and hundred IBUs. So. so it becomes a triple because of where the alcohol is. Yep, exactly, yeah. And it's smooth though, because normally when you have a triple, it's not so smooth. Yeah, yeah I know. I. How do you do that? How do you smooth it out there, Ryan Chaya? You know, I, I another stump of a question there. Uh, I, I just somehow... Come on, you're the brewer. You don't even know how you do it? Now I'm starting to become confused. Now, I, do you actually brew this beer? What are you talking about? You know, I just I just buy things and market it as our own. But no, you know, I, I have always, uh, I've always had that people ask me that. It's like, man, this is like a, a nine or, you know, 13% beer. And it's like, how is it so smooth and so drinkable? And I'm like... You know, that's a very good question. I, I never went into it saying, hey, this is going to be, you know, 10.5% and it's going to be super smooth and drink like a 6%. But I don't know. It just it just just came out tasting great. And that's just one of the, the mysteries of brewing for me is somehow making it taste delicious. So, yeah. All right. Well, the answer in the future is uh, that you just look at them and say, because I'm that damn good. That's what you used to say to them. Okay. That, that, I'm, not, uh, I'm not that bold. I'm a little <laughs> humble. So, no. All right, well, come out and taste the humble uh, brewer's beer here. Ryan Chaya over at uh, Flossmore Brewing Station. Uh, really, 
it's really good. It's 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 really kind of a neat place to hang out to. Um, it kind of like you feel like a small town feel when you're sitting here, and you got so many different options and so many different places you can sit down. You can have a beer. Uh, you're getting entertainment. I'm noticing on on the weekends, and you're you're getting good crowds out here, and people are back and are having a good time. And I would imagine you've enjoyed your summer, right? It has been a great summer, yes. And it's uh, weekends are crazy, even the week weeknights are crazy so yeah check our uh, instagram our facebook and our social media and kind of see what's going on on the weekends and see if we have a dj out on a saturday night or something like that so all right ryan chaya he uh, makes good beer has no idea how he does it thanks so much my friend <laughs> thank you <laughs> another good interview on the south side pod how come mike and me are never invited to these things i want to go me too you never invite us. If you're out there and you're suffering from sleep apnea, you need a CPAP machine, high at home medical equipment. You need an oxygen tank. Maybe not for you. Maybe you got a parent. They got oxygen needs. You don't want to keep refilling just one tank. You need a couple of spares. High at home medical equipment. Do you need the supplies for diabetes control? High at home medical equipment. They've also got the specialized recliners, the beds, the aids for the bathroom, the conversions for the bathtub, the chair lifts, the ramps outside. You name it, they have it. They make it easy. They work with your insurance and they give a discount if you mention Southside Pod. They're located right here on the South Side. It is such a relief to be able to talk to somebody face to face when you're dealing with medical equipment. It's all about staying independent and in the home and Hyatt wants to help. Check out all they have to offer at hhme.com or stop in once again, mention Southside Pod. They're at 3518 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. Speaking of medical things, my children's hillbilly teeth are costing me money. Yes. Oh, no. It's about time. You know, I never had, like, major tooth problems, right? Like, I don't have, like, the greatest teeth, and I'm not, I'm not a model by any means, but I didn't, I didn't really need to go in there and have them fix every tooth individually. I've never had a cavity. These kids have three or four each. They come back from the dentist office. Wait, your youngest? All of them have it. I was told that the youngest is genetic. So those are how, hillbilly teeth because Eric is, is from West Virginia. How is it possible they cavities that young? Eric is from West Virginia, man. Those are some teeth. Those are, I mean, some those are like teeth. starter teeth. Yeah. Well, no. No, in the did, new did teeth they try you just to tell got. you that like, you need, like, when they start telling you you need like to get braces or something before they're like adult teeth are coming in. Like, what? Just yeah. let the, the, the little kid's teeth can rot out. <laughs> it's fine. Here's the thing I wanted to point out. They go to this place. I'm not going to give away the name of it. Southside Dentist, that's like pretty good name one. Like, I, I mean, I think a lot of people go to this place. Okay? okay. And my wife goes, all right, what do we need done? And I'm like, well, this tooth on this kid and this tooth on this kid and this kid needs to do this and this kid needs to do this. And this is what you would owe after the insurance. And she goes, I want you to print it out. My husband's going to want to see this. Yeah. And they argue with her. They go, no, we don't normally print it out. And she goes, oh, hold on a second. All right. If I went and got a muffler replaced, correct. somebody would menu. print out the estimate, yeah. right? right? Why this isn't is it, some under-the-table cash deal here. Right. If, if you're going to do a procedure if it is, on my I want children, a discount. Yeah, I want a discount. <laughs> right We're doing this under the table in cash here in pocket. I want a discount. Right. So her thing was like, no, and no, And a pick from the treasure chest. I want to see what I'm getting charged for printed out for me. Itemized. Right. I want to know yeah. what you're charging me for, what the insurance the is covering details. everything. Show me what you're looking at but on They your don't screen. like doing that because they, if you were paying cash, you they would off. have one deal. Right. And if they were paying through the insurance, I mean, I, I, I've learned that before. You go you go through like a cash deal through a doctor, oh, you, you, know, you get charged $120. Eight million you look dollars. at the insurance deal, it's, it's like $7,000, yeah. but your portion is you know this. So now they, here's well, here's the thing that I see. Fitty. She <laughs> gets it because I think the final thing that was said back and forth was, well, we don't do that. And she was like, well, if I wanted to go get a hamburger at, at Wendy's instead of McDonald's, I would just pick a different, like, it's just like picking a different dentist. Right. Like, if you're not going to work with me, I'll go to somebody they, else. That's the problem we're why your kids have cavities, ma'am. Yeah, we're going to Wendy's for dental. Yeah, like, that's Wendy's the problem why your kids have cavities, ma'am. <laughs> you need to provide better food services for your kids. Maybe if you weren't going to Wendy's for right. your dental. Right. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, the... The list comes to me, and she shows it to me. Now, here's the first thing. The little guy, Double right? cheeseburger. <laughs> little guy, they want to give him the nitrous to put him under to fix something. It's the exact same procedure the other two are doing, but they've decided they want to put him under. But not only do <laughs> Wait, they want to- the other kids don't get the under? No, they don't get to go under. 
What, what but is, not only like higher no, pain like tolerance. A, she's like a jaguar yeah. getting a tooth pulled in the it's zoo. Like, it's like F them. Kids. He's just gonna right. get the, the blow dart in the butt. Yeah, teenagers <laughs> can scream. Out. Teenagers yeah. can scream. Them Seven year old, they're gonna put out yeah. for this thing. But the thing is, there's two teeth that they need to fix. They decide they're gonna they're gonna put them under twice and do each tooth individually on two yeah, different that days. That makes sense. You wanna know why? Because it's two hundred bucks out of yeah. my yeah, pocket right. for every time they put them under, so they Couldn't want four hundred. do two. Yeah, they want four hundred. There's no way you could get two teeth done when you knock the kid out. I had to get a deep cleaning at a dentist, and they wanted to do it in four sections over four days. And I'm like, just do it. They're like just your mouth it. will be too sore. I'm like, I don't care. Right, you're just trying to make more money off of me. Right. When you're doing I don't. This. What, I don't talk to people. I don't need to. You know, he doesn't uh, chew his food. He right. drinks his dinner. <laughs> your mouth will be sore. But here's just the funniest do thing. It. Here's the funniest part about it. I was able to look at all three kids, yeah. and they have the procedures with their medical code as the how they bill it next yeah. to them. So all three of them had, I found the same code, 3621. Oh. And the 30. Oh, the 36. Oh, oh, shut up. The whole point was Pulling it was a old, cavity fill and a sealant. It described the same procedure. The book. It described the procedure, right? Okay, okay. Okay. So for that Procedure, whatever you want to call it. 3621. That's what I want to call it. 3621. Yeah. The 16-year-old was being charged $250. Bigger tooth. Of which the insurance company would pick up everything except for 50 bucks. Okay. For the for the other kid, the 14-year-old, it was the exact same procedure and the same tooth. They actually had the tooth number on there. Oh, yeah. The same tooth. They wanted a hundred dollars from me instead, okay. and a total of three hundred dollars. And the third it's one like was a completely different wheel price. Or whatever it lands on. And I get to the end of it, and I tell Erica, I go, I go, uh, it's the same procedure for all three kids. We, 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 that's ridiculous. This is dumb. This is the stupidest thing I've ever it's heard. It comes down to no one knows what they're doing <laughs> right. in the whole world. Like, they're just, Nobody. They're just writing Everyone numbers is faking down. Everything. They're just writing numbers from down. Doctors. To people that work in construction. Pull up, pull up, pull to, up G12. What's G12 in the catalog? At Wendy's. Right. Everyone is just faking their right. way That's through That's why I'm able to get great life. dental care at Wendy's. Right. Because right. they're faking it. Right. <laughs> It's now time for your Southside Pod Bulletin Board, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard. Cool Clouds wants to help. They have a full taster bar and great CBD products. Stop in and see them in Evergreen Park, 3837 West 95th Street, or check them out online at coolcloudsvapor.com. If you have a kid who wants to play soccer and you're in Palos, Palos Heights is taking registration right now for the Rec Center's Indoor Soccer League. Age groups of 3 to 4, 5 to 6, or 7 to 10. The league kicks off on Sundays beginning October the 23rd, but you can register now at 708-361-1807. In Bridgeview, there's a Halloween garage sale in Oddities Market happening this Saturday from noon until 6 p.m. 8100 Beloit Avenue. $5 tickets. You can get them on Eventbrite. It features collectibles like haunted artwork and creepy jewelry and skulls and bones. I hope they're not real skulls and bones. That would be really weird. If you love Halloween and you can't even wait till September to start going to things like this, you are covered in Bridgeview this Saturday. If you like Dave Matthews music and you don't want to pay Dave Matthews prices, Trippin' Billy's a Dave Matthews tribute band will be in Lamont this Saturday from 6 p.m. till 8.30 at The Forge. If you don't care about Dave Matthews, but you like The Forge and drinking, mark your calendars the 24th of September, Pollyanna Brewing, Oktoberfest 2022, Southside Pod will be there. Early bird tickets now on sale for only $10 at pollyannabrewing.com. How about something calmer this weekend for you? Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m., a Monarch Butterfly Festival, a free public event in Oak Lawn, 1 to 4 p.m. at the Oak View Center, 4625 West 110th Street. Learn about the butterflies, do butterfly crafts and activities and games. It's basically what it sounds like. This Friday night, the 26th, Billy Desmond is going to be at Blue Island Beer Company. $10 suggested donation, 13357 Old Western Avenue. Our good friends over at the Lyric Theater in Blue Island. We were just talking with them a couple of shows ago. Go check it out if you missed it. Raiders of the Lost Ark plays Friday night the 26th. Shrek is playing Sunday the 28th. 
There's a special sing-along event with two sessions happening on Saturday. Get all the details and the tickets and everything else at lyrictheater.com. That's your bulletin board. If you have something for Southside Pod, hit us up, southsidepod.com. Type in a message, leave us a voicemail. We'll get it in there. And then people will hear it anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com. You can't give bitcoins in church because Jesus doesn't like digital currency. And neither do me. You can't bet Bitcoin at NASCAR races either. And you can't buy a tin of dip with the NFT. So I say, what's wrong with the dollar anyway? Can't slide a Bitcoin in Destiny's G-string You can't slide an NFT If you want anything real in life anymore So I say What's wrong with the dollar anyway? What's wrong with a dollar anyway? We all have things we don't like. We all have things we'd like to change. Some people may want to run for public office, make some sort of a change. It seems like a pretty daunting task. The EP Podcast, one of the other podcasts here on the Broadcast Basement On Demand Radio Network, the same network that has Southside Pod, We had Lorraine Swanson from The Patch that does local news here on the South Side and Bert Odelson, an attorney and an expert in election law. The guy was arguing in the Supreme Court during that whole hanging chads thing with George W. Bush and Al Gore. So he's kind of a big deal. He spent a half hour on that show, a special all on how to run for public office, specifically small office like your mayor, city council school boards, things like that. We're going to take a look at another show in the network. That's all brought to you by Sid Sauce. Our friends at Sid Sauce grow their peppers right here on the South Side. They bottle their sauces right here on the South Side. They deliver right here on the South Side. They have an abundance of hot sauces. They're all very tasty. It's the only place I get my hot sauce from. Get over to SidSauce.net. Here's a quick taste of that episode you can find anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the EPPodcast.com. Right here on Southside Pod, we're just going to play what Bert said when I asked him how daunting of a task is it to actually run for local office. Well, unfortunately, I I like to answer and say it's not as daunting as it sounds because more people should run for office. We should have contested races. But unfortunately, here in Illinois, and Cook County especially, it is a daunting task, depending on how high an office. Now, if you're going to run for library board in Evergreen Park, uh, or or um, um, park board, uh, you probably are okay at just getting some general guidance and reading the manuals that the Illinois State Board of Election puts out. But if you're going to run for mayor or trustee or state representative or judge, uh, you're, you're probably going to be contested on the local level, so you better know what you're doing when you get into it and better be serious. So it is a daunting task, I, I have to be honest. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's a, it's a daunting task. Daunting in Illinois, even more so than many other states who make it a lot easier uh, to get ballot access uh, because of kind of the one party system we've had for uh, decades in, in Illinois. Uh, the laws in the General Assembly have been built to uh, help incumbents and uh, challengers have a difficult time navigating uh, the election law rivers in, in order to find uh, enough good signatures to uh, get on the ballot and to do your forms right uh, and to file them right. Um, So it is a daunting task. Would you say that local elections, they're probably even more important than voting for president? Am I off base You're you're 100%. I just had this conversation yesterday with uh, one of the associates in my office because we uh, 
we were fortunate enough to pass a home rule referendum in the village of Matson, where we're the village attorneys, and that will change the village dramatically because we have more local power. And we were just not joking, quite serious, that it is more important to, to run for your school board and for your local municipal uh, board uh, than it is to run for state senator, state rep, or president. That might be most prevalent right now, I think, in the minds of people when they look at the news where you see school boards on Fox News and CNN's front page now, right? And you noticed how local municipalities dealt with the pandemic almost individually. Like, sure, they let the state try to tell them what to do to a point, and then they started asserting their power. I don't think people saw that kind of local, I don't I don't know, they're just throwing around their weight or at least making decisions that impact your life as much as we have in the last couple of years, right? Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. The pandemic really brought forth uh, the power uh, that local authorities do have, uh, all dependent on the, uh, 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 on the medical advice and the medical boards. In other words, Cook County was governed by the Cook County doctor and, and, and their board, uh, but then the local municipalities uh, had a lot of leeway uh, governing themselves in accordance with the mandates of the governor, the local um, uh, medical boards. Uh, the school districts also, and I was involved in litigation with school districts, uh, uh, were most important because of the mask or not mask and uh, ho- uh, t- classes at home, not classes at home. And the school boards, unpaid elected school board members were making those decisions, very serious des- decisions, which obviously we all saw affected people's lives, children's lives, adult lives. Can we get a Southside Pod beer? I want one of those. How do we get that? Oh, well, oh, look, I've been thinking of breweries that might do it, right? Or an EP. Or, Listen, or, other radio people we know have had beers. No, named so hold on. I've been thinking about this. Edition, like, Hailstorm Brewing out in I know people Tindley. who work there. Well, they're Tindley. also a big sponsor of Socks in the Basement on the they network. They are, really? Yes. Shout Radio. out to Frankie and Jess. Maybe them because of the, yeah. the business relationship, right? Okay. Open Outcry, another one. They're on the EP podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They run stuff on that one. John Brand? Maybe them. Okay, yep. maybe John yep. Brand does it. Another one that I think could do it, Evil Horse Brewing Ooh. out in Crete. Pollyanna yeah. could do it. Pollyanna might do it as well. We, we would kind of have to start knocking on doors. I mean, Horse Thief Hollow. Ooh, Horse Neil yeah. over there at Horse Thief has done things before. He does one-off beers named after people. Even if we got to, like, you know, let's let's pull the curtain back for the listeners, but even if we got to pay to do it and make it sound like Why we're doing do we have it to for pay us. For it? Shouldn't these because breweries be competing to have the Southside Pod beer, right? I would think so. Right? I mean, shouldn't I w- they be competing? But if we got to, you know, kick a little bit to, you know, offset things... I think we're willing. And what would would it be? Would the name of the beer be Southside Pod Beer, or would it be a reference to something on the show? Like Mike's a terrible guitarist. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's I, really not new, what you want new in your West beer Coast IBA, I think a new West because, Coast IPA. I think the beer should just be called Hey Bear. Hey Bear. <laughs> hey, hey Bear. Would be a great beer. Hey, hey beer. beer. Hey Beer. Hey Beer. Hey Beer. Whoa. Oh my goodness! Should <laughs> be a rush. All these wow. Southside breweries. S S P I P A. Sippa. It's a sippa beer. <laughs> it's Southside. It's Southside. It's Southside Pod. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to the Southside Pod. Y'all come back now, you hear?